Uh, you ready to get going? Okay. So uh, let's start with congratulations. You had a new record coming, uh, Feed the Moon, out in May 19th, I think is the date I'm seeing. That's right. I want to hear all about it. Ooh, do you have like uh, three hours? <laughs> yeah, we want to get down to the nitty gritty or the details. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk very fast. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is our first album, believe it or not, in 10 years of existence, because we've been releasing a lot of EPs before that, but that's our first like, real album and we are like pressing vinyls and stuff so we're very very happy about this achievement and uh so basically uh, it started um i guess seven years ago we can say after we released our ep called murderology which was the first step of what the band has became now has become and we started writing and we met this amazing producer billy Gradzadei, who is the founder of the band Biohazard, a uh, hawk yeah. art punk band from New York. And um, that was um, weird because actually we, he, he wanted to, to meet us after we've been recording the previous EP in his studio without knowing. Yeah, we didn't know it was his <laughs> studio. So that was... Because <laughs> we were working with an, another engineer that was working for him. And, uh, you know, life happens and then you enter into a studio and it happens to belong to Billy from Biohazard. He stumbled upon one of our CDs and he, he said to, to the guy, Julian David, who produced the previous EP, I want to meet those guys. I like their music. And we were so surprised because we're not a hardcore band, you know? Stylistically, you're so different. Yeah. <laughs> yet, yet, that was very welcome from us because we wanted to have more impact in our music, more heaviness, because we, we are a very melodic band but we crave for heavy sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Searching for that edge. Oh yeah. Exactly. And uh, we realized Billy was not just that hardcore guy. He was uh, so much more and uh, very, you know, he's classically trained. He knows so many stuff and uh, we yeah. learned so much yeah, from him. Yeah, we learned so much. Definitely. So we um, decided to work with him. We brought our demos and uh, he loved them. So we started re recording with them. Yeah, we wanted to do it a little bit, you know, old school uh, with a real producer in a real studio and really work with the songs and really have, you know, work on the arrangement mm -hmm. uh, with him. So he brought a lot to the songs. Um, it, it's almost like he's part of the band now because he <laughs> so much into this. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And he, he helped us fi find our sound and uh, he really uh, finished writing the songs with us. So that was amazing. Yeah. yeah, that external voice can be really critical for some bands. They absolutely, it, it rounds out their sound, makes them so much deeper, if you will. Yes. Yeah, I agree totally. It takes more time, which was frustrate, frustrating sometimes. Sometimes I would be like, why do we spend so much time in the studio? <laughs> Well, you had some time to kill. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, you know, in the end, we're very, very happy about the result and uh, so happy that the world's going to be finally hearing it soon. Hopefully. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. You had a, you have a guest on the uh, record, Davey Portrello? Portello? Yes. I'm going to get it wrong. Um, <laughs> how, did, how did Davey fit into this? How did you choose him or ask him to join in? Well, actually, Davey Portela is uh, from the band Playmo in France, which is like a metal band that's pretty famous in France. And actually, I had a band with him when I was in France. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's a good connection. <laughs> so we had this band called Lula Fortune, which is kind of an acoustic band that we had before. Okay. And uh, before I moved to the U.S. And of course, once he came to see us, in Los Angeles and because we're still friends and we're still making music together and uh, he he's a huge fan of uh, Billy so I brought him to the studio and uh, it know, was funny the, to see him being the the fan mm -hmm. and not the rock star <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool to see him like a little kid uh, yeah. meeting his idol and uh, he was intimidated and and then he played you know <laughs> Oh, he's going to watch this and he's going to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> but next thing you know, he was uh, playing on the guitar. So we were like, okay, 
let's do that. Let's try something. And uh, he improvised a few stuff and uh, Billy uh, put it in the mix. And uh, that was great and amazing, of course. So yeah, we're that happy. Was it. it wasn't really prepared. No, it wasn't. Think. It was totally improvised. It was not <laughs> something we scheduled most of it. He, he wanted to meet Billy and that's it. And, and we ended up doing that. <laughs> well, I know there was some delays uh, with the release of this record. It, it seems like that's a common tale for just about everybody in the moment. Um, but you snuck out sort of a, a studio live few songs, kind of halfway through, you surprised everybody. Talk a little bit about that, de that design to just give everybody an early taste of what this record is going to be all about. Well, um, the, you mean the, the, the album? Yes. Well, before the uh, last summer. Um, oh, no, yeah, wow. you're talking about close, yes. close to home. Yes. So, yeah, we were so frustrated that we couldn't release this record because, like you, like I said before, it took a long time for us to to get there because we spent a long time in the studio, and then the mixing of the record took another one year, one year oh. and a half, because uh, we wanted to work with uh, Michael Patterson, but of course he's really busy guy because he works with Nine Inch Nails. He was working on Black Mirror and... We were last on the list. Well, I mean, we didn't... <laughs> on the <that>. list. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how much you pay, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we, we knew, you know, that it would be like that. It was like, I really want to work with you guys. Okay, you don't have the budget, but we're going to make it happen. Just be patient and it's going to happen. And that's what happened, you know? And we were really happy in the end, so. But when it was all ready to be released, it was a pandemic, so. Yeah, the pandemic <laughs> happened. And, and so that's how we, we thought, oh, let's do a live, you know, yeah, from home, like, I could have other bands, basically, you know, we experimented this. And our drummer was stuck in Northern California. We couldn't see each other. We couldn't rehearse. So we were like, okay, let's record everybody separately and then we'll put it together. And uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good preview of the record because there's the energy, there's the the songs. Apart from the cover, um, the yeah, songs are all on the record. So exactly. right, right, <laughs> exactly. So no, yeah. it, you're right. I you're right. I think it is a great preview of the record itself, and uh, it was exciting to hear the the studio version uh, rather than the studio live version um, later. And uh, it, it just, they fit very well. Uh, it's perfect. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, so you've got four videos out now. Um, I'm looking through my notes here. You and I and I, Lowland, Do You Need More and Hummingbird. Um, video is everything at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, originally we wanted to do one video per song for this record. Yeah. <laughs> and we started doing that. And actually, we shot Hummingbird back in 2018, just to right. tell you how much we anticipated that. And we ended up not doing the whole <laughs> record. Right? But you're right, it became something very uh, useful for bands because nowadays with Spotify and all the platforms, well, you know, you release one song at a time. That's what bands do now because you have more promotion. I need content. Spin around. You need content. <laughs> yeah. Your content producer, <laughs> creator. This, uh, this is absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one way to do it, you know, or, and let's make it fun and let's be creative and we'll do our own videos and shoot it ourselves with our iPhones and uh, let's see where it takes us, you know. So it's all about do it yourself. Well, they're a fun take. Then, you know, um, Videos can be an excellent representation. The, the message doesn't always come across with the music and the lyric. People mm -hmm. have their own interpretation. Sometimes the video sort of focuses the mind and uh, leads people to the messages you're trying to share with them. And uh, I think obviously you achieve that. Um, mm -hmm. It was exciting to see the, the videos come out. And uh, There's been a small, with every release, there's an evolution that occurs. Um, your your original sound is still there and on some of the songs, but in others there's uh, there's some growth and talk a little bit about kind of uh, detail on how you feel that you evolved since your previous releases. It's been a little bit of time, you know, and uh, I'm just interested. Yeah, you're right. We we evolved, and I think we confirmed the direction that we want to go. And I think it all started with Murderology. 
the EP, mm -hmm. the previous EP. That was the first time that we achieved that balance between melody, harmony, and dark and heaviness. And that, I guess that's what we want to do. And that's what we wanted to push with this record and achieve it more and more. We wanted to be, I always joke about that, like a mix between Black Sabbath and the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really cool reference. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a difficult blend. Yeah, it's yeah. a difficult blend, but I guess that's <laughs> where we want to go with this kind of music. I don't know if we achieve it, but at least we're having fun trying. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You've had some success with Lowland, uh, particularly uh, it's in the college radio charts or was in the charts. And uh, are you excited to see your music reach uh, a wide audience um, and, you know, kind of hear back? Oh, yeah, it's uh, very amazing. Yeah. And, you know, we have this uh, multiple culture, cultural background. Yes. So we are really happy when we have feedback from friends, of course. And we're very happy now that we have... Uh, managed to get a fan base in the U.S. now. That's where we're located. And thanks to the, you know, new world, we can reach out to even more people. So we got great feedbacks from Peru, for example, which was amazing because we've never been there. And it's great to see that uh, our music travels and that we'll hate people differently in some countries in the world will react very positively to our music. So that's really amazing. We've been played in Japan too. And uh, that's always- And a little bit in Turkey. And a little bit of in Turkey, <laughs> and our current guitar player, Burak, is from Turkey. So mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's really, it really matters to us that uh, our music travels, and it's always uh, great to find new audiences everywhere, you know. You've mentioned multiculture. You've obviously released uh, some music in uh, both languages, uh, English and French. And... Uh, are you excited when the French language is embraced in America? I know the, the songs, I, I, forgive me, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you almost said it. <laughs> almost. No, almost. I, I, I read your mind and it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it was in my mind, everybody else in there. <laughs> are you excited when the, when the uh, French language songs are embraced in America as well? To be totally honest with you, we did it because people in America asked us, like, oh, why don't you sing in French? And we were like, oh, we didn't want to do singing in French because usually rock bands in, in France, they, when they sing French, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we were raised thinking that. And we, at the beginning, we were like, no, we're never going to do it. Never, not going to happen. You know, we love the... American rock culture and we don't want to betray it <laughs> somehow but at the same time we're growing up and we're reflecting on all this and we were like that would be funny just to you know have a bit of it a touch of French and um, we did it we did Je veux danser tout l'été and uh, and there was even a like a techno remix of the song so we went <laughs> the whole way with experimenting it went french touch yeah but actually funny sorry i didn't think french people would love this song i, I, I was like they're gonna hate it they're we're gonna lose half of our audience there oh. we actually landed up on mtv in france and we were like what <laughs> so we were pretty happy it's your your comment regarding french music uh, our french language in in heavier music. Obviously, there are some languages that very appropriately fit into heavier music and others that the language just doesn't seem to mix well. Um, right. Nothing. It's not about the language. It's just, yeah, French sounds so sophisticated and delicate to Meyer as mm -hmm. compared to um, German or exactly. some of the Nordic right. languages or, yeah. I feel like French language works well when it's lower singing and it's almost like spoken and there when it's like and because there is natural melody i guess in, in the yeah and the, when yeah. you sing in french the meaning of the words are in your face you know mm -hmm. when you sing english you can hear a song and not even focus on the lyrics and it's it's okay who cares it sounds good you know the french language is in your face with the, <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the sh so you cannot really escape it how about german German, I think it's great for metal music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I never really paid attention to the lyrics of Rammstein, you know. Yeah, well, I don't speak German, so it would be hard. <laughs> I guess, I mean, we love Serge Gainsbourg, we love tons of French artists, you know, and mm -hmm. it's nothing er, er, against our language that we love and our culture that we love, but for the rock songs that we do, or maybe we have to try harder, I don't know, we didn't find a way to make it really sound good so far. Uh, work in progress. <laughs> good <laughs> well, what are the thoughts as far as touring looks like things are beginning to open up a little bit toward the end of the year here are you uh, looking to getting on the road here in 2021 or is it going to be 2022 i don't say it's going to be this year but we're really uh thinking that 2022 is going to be the year for us and uh we're um we're, we're not talking with anyone at the moment but uh it's in it's, a, it's in our plans definitely yeah i think there's going to be a tour in europe and yeah. also one here in the U.S. for sure. Yeah, there we're getting you know touches. We're uh, we're talking to some people a, a little bit, but there's no plans right now. And we need to rehearse. Maybe we'll do another <laughs> record before that happens because I don't want to ah. wait for seven more years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a bit of a pause there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is already exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all the questions I have for you today. Is there anything I missed? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Well, um, no, well, thank you so much yeah. for giving us the opportunity because, you know, when you're an uh, independent band, it's really, really difficult to get your message when you're out there because there are you know, so many bands and so many artists now that are releasing music every day. So just thank you for the opportunity yeah. to talk about Yard of Falls. No, that's what it's all about, finding good music for people to uh, discover. Thank you so much. You. Uh, also, if you, if you want to, we, we also have a podcast. It's called Hanging on Sunset. So if the listeners want to listen to it, we're talking about the LA scene, California scene mostly. And we're trying to uh, ask ourselves why uh, rock and roll is not really mainstream anymore. And what can we do about it? Can we unite forces? We're trying to build kind of a movement between independent bands out here in LA and in France. And uh, if you want to join the conversation, well, connect to Hanging Out and Set it on every platform. Perfect. Well, make sure everybody checks the socials, catch you uh, on the web and everything. And I look forward to seeing you when you finally come off on tour. So thank you thank so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great day. Have you a great too. Day. Bye. Bye.